Well, thank you very much, Andy. It's nice to see so many familiar faces and some new faces. Uh, the main aim of this lesson, I suppose, um, more over than the right hand technique would be what, what to do with the left hand. I mean, it seems to be forgotten in so many cases. Uh, you've got your chord books from the society shop and they will give you the basic chords that form be played, but also perhaps you should be thinking about how to make your solos more melodic. When you watch Matt Richards and Andy Eastwood, uh, what you're hearing there is a far more technical version of Form B's original solo. And uh, it tends to include what they call inverted chords, which is the same uh, chord, but further up the fretboard. And they use them to their advantage um, to pick out the melody. But I'm not Matthew Richards and I'm not Andy Eastwood and uh, I couldn't go anywhere near that sort of skill and technique. So would it be possible to do that sort of thing with just including the slightest difference? So say, for example, just one finger in another position. So that's what I'm going to be showing today uh, in a few examples in different songs and different solos. Uh, just including one extra thing and who knows it might make a bit of a difference i'll uh, see what you think um as andy said if you do have any questions to avoid any uh cacophony of noise and peter pollard uh, if you can <laughs> if you can keep all your questions to the chat box and if you didn't want it to be public you can always uh there's a setting on there where you can direct it to, to myself and they can all rena uh, remain anonymous. Right, so as I said, it's not gonna be too technical. Uh, I'm not gonna be talking about the right hand technique. Uh, I'll leave that to uh, Andy Poppleton, who had his lesson yesterday. But we're all gonna be talking about the left hand technique. So I'm gonna do something a bit technical now and I'm hoping it's gonna work. Uh, let me go on here. So I'm going to fetch up some chords behind me. Can you see those? Not if you can see them. Yeah. Yeah, very good, yeah. So all it is, these here are the standard chords for a line in Chinese laundry blues. One line, very simple, exactly the same as in your, your song books. Uh, my vest's so short that it won't fit my little brother. So really, all it is, that one chord, the first chord there, the uh, the D7, where it starts on, is really just there to show you where it is in the song. That chord comes into place well before that word. So really that line just has two chords in it. I mean, it suffices, it does the job, but... Unless you start throwing in triples and shakes and all the rest of it, it's not that interesting. As I said, going back to the likes of Andy Eastwood, Matt Richards, Dickie Speak, they do throw in some more components. So I'm just going to go back onto my backgrounds and fetch up how I would play it. So again, just including one finger, um, same chords, but on that bottom line, I'm just including the D chord. So you've gone from to and you can actually hear the, the lyrics of the song in the chords. extra finger that's projected that into a bit a slightly more mel melodic uh solo so have a go that a go of that yourself all it is is retaining that retaining that existing chord and this is the thing with these backgrounds they never pick you up very well let me turn it off and explain now uh so you've all got that there you're just putting your finger underneath that g7 chord in the d position Take that background off so I can show you without it cutting my uke off. Right. So it, all it is, F chord, that finger there, exactly as it is in the songbook. Fit, fit, oops, 
Fit my little brother. So as I said, it's a lot different to uh, the basic chords um, where we started in the songbooks, Formby's version, but it just makes it that slightly bit more um, melodic. So you've gone from that to that, and all you're doing is finger tapping. You're on that D chord position, lifting it on with the red text and lift it, lifting it off on the black text. And it's, um, as I said, completely brings the that line of the solo to life. I mean, it's very quick moving, um, but just that small difference. And then we might as well mention the right hand while we're here. As long, as you're keeping everything to those four beats in a bar, you can do anything really, but I would recommend a triple stroke. So what I'm doing is a triple on the fit and another triple on the brother of brother. I mean, when I've done a lesson like this in Blackpool, and uh, it's always a lot to take in when you see it on the screen and it's happening in front of you. But I think Peter's recording the meeting and you may not get it now, but you can watch the video back and uh, it may make a bit more sense. But all it is, as I said, literally including one more finger into that chord, finger tapping on those red notes, on those red words. And it's just brought that line to life. That's only one part of the solo. There's so much you can do with the uh, ukulele solos. Any questions up so far? No questions? All happy with that? All makes sense? So keeping with that same idea with that chord, with that one extra finger on that third fret, that actually works with a few more songs. Go back onto my backgrounds. So, sticking with that chord pattern and uh, sticking with Mr. Wu as well, um, we'll go on to Mr. Wu's an air raid warden. So, you've got that line from Mr. Wu's an air raid warden. One night while on his beat, a couple he did meet. Whoops, I'm playing the other version. So again, three chords in that one line. My version, which does look a bit more complicated, but it's the same principle, staying on that third threat again in that D, standard D chord position. So again, finger tapping on those red words just makes that slight difference and makes the solo a bit more interesting instead of those standard chords. And you have Does that make sense? So it's the same chord progression, the same idea but, you know, it's the sort of thing you can use in a few solos. Picking out that melody of the song. Again, it's so fast moving. It looks complicated on paper, but you're literally just finger tapping. And again, if you listen to the, the solo, that, that passage, you can hear the words in the chord. One, 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 one. And then 
the right hand. You can put, as I said, I tend to recommend triples on the accented notes, which in this case are highlighted in red. Again, I know we try to strive to be like Form, being Andy Eastwood and Matt Richards, but at the same time, you've got to try and be unique. So I'm giving you all these ideas, but don't be afraid to go away and take the principle of it, but make it your own at the same time. You know, we can't all be carbon copies of ourselves or conventions and concerts at Blackpool get pretty boring. Right, so we're all happy with that. All making sense. No questions so far. As I said, if you think I'm going too fast or moving too quickly, all making sense. Right, we'll go back to Chinese Laundry Blues to another line. Again, just including one extra finger. One or two backgrounds. So that one there. The line straight after that first one that I showed you. So from, uh, whoops, nope, that's the wrong one. Straight after that first line, my best so short that it won't fit my little brother and my new Sunday shirt has got a perforated rudder. So it's going to be one line to go straight through. So instead of uh, two chords again, we can move it up a gear and just include one extra finger to make it that. So, I don't know if you can see it from those chord diagrams. I mean, they look harder than what they are. Again, just using your pinky finger, your little finger, you'll be able to move them up one. easier if you can sing the song as you're playing along you know when you're playing your solo to keep the melody in your mind So does that make sense as well? All simple things, but they are quite effective. So as I said, you've gone from that to that. So doing that full line all the way through. Now going on to. all to life uh, and it makes you so unique as I said uh, we all try strive to play like Formby but we I think it's always good to be unique and things like this do help so does that all make sense up to now all clear as I said it's all simple um, but it's quite effective when you put it all in one um, right let's go back to Air Raid Walton so the next line from the line that we looked at with Air Raid Warden was, uh, again, only two chords uh, in the songbooks and the chords that Formby played. So keeping with that chord again, the C chord when you're tuned in D, it goes to that. So I've split that power up, well, the word any into two, and you're picking the first 
uh, syllable of the word, N, A N, with that first part of the chord. Again, so fast moving, it's, I think it's less than a, a second or half a second of the solo, but it's just that small accent that you can put on that chord, which does make a difference. Keeping with that progression, I'll turn that background off, that could also be used in Get Cracking. less than a second but that two little movements can pick out a word and just make the, that part of the solo slightly more interesting any questions at all i'm not going too fast um neil You'll have to unmute. Yeah, sorry, uh, Lewis. I just wanted to say no, that's a perfect tempo for me. Uh, so I was giving you a thumbs up rather than uh, trying wow. to interrupt with a question. But to answer your question, no, that for me anyway, I'm not sure about the other 23, that's perfect. Thank you. Because <laughs> I know it, it can be a bit daunting when it's in front of you and you're doing it live and it's a lot to take in, especially once I've said it and it's gone. It's not on paper. I mean, I try to do those chords, which makes it does it does make it a bit more clearer and a bit more practical to explain. Um, but going back to that little sequence on that chord, which when you're tuned in at C, it's B flat, uh, D, it's C. The correct way of doing that would be to do three chords but it only makes the same uh, sound. So those chords are. Those chords are. But it's far easier just to move that finger. because it makes exactly the same sound. Um, the other thing I suppose we can talk about is the window cleaner. Now, I haven't got any chord diagrams for that because it is, uh, I wouldn't say complicated, but as you know, there are so many chords to that. Um, with the cleaner, how George actually played it to start off with, and I haven't seen a tutorial for it on YouTube. You listen to the recording, it, and it is different to the songbook chords. The first line of the window cleaner, how George plays it in the recording, again, just adding finger taps to certain chords in certain positions. So, the main part. I'm trying to guess that, is he goes. You listen to the recording, it is slightly different. So all he does there is the D chord, goes to the D7 chord, as it is in your songbook, but he bounces back off the D chord. So he goes. So all these little things you can do and add by just putting a finger, one finger, no need to go up the neck just yet. You can hope to progress to that, but it is quite difficult. But in terms of starting off, to make your souls more melodic, I would recommend just putting a finger in certain places 
like the progressions that I've shown you to pick out some of the melody. Another one is Sergeant Major, uh, which is why I featured at Blackpool uh, in the last lesson that I did. Um, again, just putting the ring finger on the D position while playing the G chord. So instead of a bit more complicated that that last bit as you can probably guess uh but i can show it you um so instead of saying oh, let me just think of a phrase of that song uh he'd even smother his own mother you can hear the words in in the chords and all i'm doing it looks more difficult than what it is really is I'm just running down the fretboard. So I'm going third fret, second fret, first fret. Then I'm going on the third fret, uh, second string, which is second string closest to the floor on the third fret. So I'm going and picking out those notes. Again, it's only three or four seconds of the song. Just makes that difference. CT races. I don't think anybody's explained this one before. I certainly haven't done a tutorial on it at all. Um, Dennis Taylor's version. Instead of just playing that standard D chord, uh, D seven chord. The way I do the second solo. that is playing round with i think i'm not too sure of this chord name to be honest i think it's an a minor i'm not too sure that chord there which is uh first string closest to the floor on the first fret uh third string closest to the floor on the second fret second string closest to the floor on the third fret and you're just playing around with those finger positions. So I'm not even, I'm not even uh, including any other chords there. I'm just playing around with the uh, construction of an existing chord. Now another thing I do on CT races. Instead of uh, going, trying to think of the line from the chord, uh, from the song. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, my insides rattle when I go the pace. Let's use that phrase, which are all I do. Um, so I'm taking that G7 chord again. Just picking out the melody again in that song, just including embellishments from the pinky finger. Uh, 
and I'm not even doing any triple shakes or anything when I'm doing that part of the song. Although you can. You can do all sorts, all sorts of stuff. But as I said, when it comes to the right hand technique, as long as it's kept within those four bars, uh, you can do anything. As long as it's kept with all, within those form bars, it's not upsetting the timing of the solo. Um, as long as you keep within those boundaries, it's uh, it'll work. When I say four bars in the solo, and what I advise you to go and do really, is to go and listen to Making Headway Now. Uh, I mean, I, I can't read music or anything, but I play by ear. And uh, Making Headway Now, you can really hear that beat. You listen to George play and it's really choppy. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. it will give you a good ear of um of rhythm uh it'll give you a good idea of what you can do within those four beats you can do all sorts as long as it's kept within those boundaries and it doesn't upset the tempo or the syncopation or the rhythm of the song making headway now uh george added the d chord into that f chord again I think in the song but books, I'm not too sure. I think it's just got the G chord. But you can also put that D position in. In the song books, again, it will show you that A7 chord, or it might be a B7 in, uh, in D. That chord, George plays it like that. So you've gone from in the in the GFS songbooks to so again one finger positions adding a finger to one chord makes a difference, but that there, as I said earlier on, is what they call a chord inversion further up the neck all the same chord going up in octaves up the neck and it's things like that Matt Richards uses and Andy Eastwood and they use it to make the solo more melodic melodic is the key word everything making sense up to now no questions at all nothing you want to be shown any songs at all? Nine o'clock. <laughs> okay. I'll show you that. Nine o'clock, what I do with nine o'clock? With the D chord, the uh, E7 chord. moving again with that E7 chord putting the pinky finger on the one two three four fifth threat on the first string closest to the floor moving it down to the fourth threat string closest to the floor back up doing what they call the E chord, which is all those three top string uh, strings on the second fret.
So you're picking out there always, always being. Then I'm going to go to the A7 chord, but I'm going to move that thing that's usually there up one fret. Moved it back down, taking it off, putting it back on, and going back to the D chord. So instead of having, you've now got. Mm, that's better. It can also be used in saving up for Sally. Sally saving up a bit for me. And you can even, going back to chord inversions, you can do it up the neck. Whoops. But I am trying to keep it simple for this lesson, adding one thing here and there. That is, but I'll explain it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Fifth fret, bar, and putting your finger on the fret after that bar on the third string closest to the floor. And all you're doing is doing two beats on each, then one on that return chord. So I'm just moving it down a fret. Then I'm going down to that A, uh, B7 chord. Going to the D, the E7 chord. G7 chord. Taking that bottom finger off. Putting it back on. And going to the D. So it's the same. But just up the neck. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that is something completely different. So I've just got a few messages. I'll have a look. You're not mentioned. Uh, last line of lamppost. That's a good one. Last line of lamppost. So instead of having. which is all the chords that you'll have in your songbook, you can do. So where you start from that is the, F, the G chord that you're doing. Go into the B7 chord. Go into that E minor chord. D7. Back to the G chord, to the, I don't know what the name of that chord is, which is that chord. Uh, first fret, uh, second fret, third string, closest to the floor. And on that same fret, first string, closest to the floor. A minor chord with the D accent. To the, D, to the E7 chord. D chord, the G7 chord, A7 chord, back to the D chord. So instead of having three chords for those few seconds, you've ended up with over a dozen, I'd say. You've got over a dozen changes, but it just picks out that melody. Slightly more complicated, but it is a chord progression that a lot of players use for that part of the song instead of just the three chords that you see in your songbook. How's that? Does that make sense, Jonathan? I mean, I can put all these, I know it's difficult to uh, explain chords uh, vocally. It's always best to see a diagram. Um, I can always put them on 
a diagram chord sheet at some point if you need them. Any other songs? Uh, what about Happy Go Lucky Me, Cliff, uh, Lewis? Happy Go Lucky Me. We mentioned passing chords, which is chords that you bounce off when going to another chord. And Happy Go Lucky Me is a good example to uh, talk about those. Uh, so, keeping with the chords that you got in your songbook. La, 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 la. So, as I'm passing to the D7 chord, I'm doing a grab of that chord, which is, I'm using my thumb to do it. The G7 chord, uh, the A7 chord, sorry. And I'm just putting my thumb over the top onto the top string on the first fret, passing over to the D7 chord. To that uh, C chord, I'm using the F chord, a mixture of the F chord and the, uh, sorry, the G chord and the G7 chord, which is using a fair few solos really, which is uh, starting with the G chord, lifting that finger off, which is a B minor chord, so It just passes into that other chord progression. It's a smooth transition instead of going straight into it. Um, Happy Go Lucky Me, it's a fairly simple song solo to start off with. Uh, so I would say you can only do passive chords with things like that without doing inversions and all the rest of it up the neck. Uh, Play off each hand. Once you get to a certain point, um, you you do it without thinking about it. You can just throw every, all sorts of things in, but slow steps is what I would say. Start with the small finger embellishments, and uh, the rest will come with time. I've got a few more questions here. Uh, question: Can you play so ending songs, which is a good point. Uh, is that the long endings, uh, Johnny? Long endings. Uh, so saving up for Sally, we'll use that as an example. Uh, as I said, uh, all him. endings. Sa uh, saving up for Sally. to do Johnny so, yeah a black pull uh, again that's nonsense really all it is is just running your finger down the thread and just doing a fan stroke as long as you're in again within those four beats it doesn't make what well, doesn't make any odds what you're doing. Um, it is just all about timing. Uh, the chords I'm doing to finish it off is... So they are simple chords. It's just all an illusion. Um, so that can be done with a few songs, but you can do it with any song, really. You can make a big ending of any song. Uh, so it is a handy technique. Uh, can you do the same with the practice piece? What's that, John Sadler, if you want to mute him? You know, as you were saying, you put chord progressions, adding your finger, pulling off. Can you yeah. do 
and so similar with the practice piece so that that is uh that's something the practice piece mainly people just copy george direct for that because that is is what it is it's a it's an iconic uh solo so people mainly just stick with what george do what george does uh in the film icy ice uh they tend just to keep with that going back to what i was saying uh as long as it's within those four beats and not upsetting the syncopation or the rhythm of the solo you can do whatever you like on that part uh Within those four beats, you're just muting the strings there, so you can do, you can grab the chord, you can muffle the chord. It is literally just the rhythm of your hands going up and down the strings there. So chords in that part of the practice piece aren't as important as the rest of it, picking out the melody of the actual piece. Um, trying to think of another. Is there any other songs? Well, did you have a question? Mr. Wally, I see you can you mute, can you mute John there, Andrew? I don't think John's talk, uh, Andrew's talking to me now. Yes, I just thought it would have been nice if we'd had an argument between Andy and Peter. <laughs> what, again? <laughs> We that can did. be arranged easily, anytime. Good. Wigan Bolt, Wigan Bolt. If you want to mute yourself, just in case we start having a dump. Wigan Bolt. So all I'm doing there is jumping off the B minor chord. That's that E chord again. I'm just lifting those uh, two positions off the D7 chord. So I'm just touching the top three strings. Uh, I bounced off the diminished chord to go into the A7 chord, which is just the uh, B7 and the D7 position, which is the first fret, first string closest to the floor, which again, you can use in a lot of things. Um, mainly, I think when you're going back into like that all the time, it's a bit distracting. So I just do it once to bounce off chords to go into another. So that's another good technique. Any other questions, any other suggestions or anything you want to be shown or would like to see any embellishments for? <laughs> but no, um, just trying to think of another thing. We've gone straight through all my material, so I'm hoping for somebody to give me some. <laughs> Andrew, any songs? Apart from Sally the Salvage Queen. No, you started doing demonstrating windows. Could you do the entire solo of the window cleaner, please? Window cleaner. Uh, I'll move a bit closer. So as I said, George's version is... goes on to that chord there. The 
which all I'm doing there is using my pinky finger on the one, two, three, four, fifth fret. Picking out that line in my profession I work hard. In my, ooh, my, All I'm doing there again with a pinky finger going to the fourth fret. That's not what Formby did, but it's something you can do again up the fret, up the, uh, the fretboard. So that's that middle eight. back into the chords that you see in the songbook. The, the main part is that uh, middle eight, which you can really pick out the melody. Black Tool Rock. Um, beginning of that. That's just a run down the fretboard. I'm going from the D chord. Um, so we're going from D, second fret, to the A minor chord. Back to the D chord. grab again. So from there, slide it up one and cap your thumb over to the top string, second fret, bounce off it onto the A7 chord, which I'm sure you all know to start with. I just take my finger off the bottom string to uh, pick out that note in the words. Something you can do to pick out a, mel uh, a, med a melody or make the solo a bit more interesting is just slide that chord up and down. Uh, I mean, as Andy pointed out yesterday, the more light-handed you can be, the more relaxed you can be when playing right hand and left hand, the better, because it does lend itself to bouncing off chords and uh, just looking more relaxed on stage. I think when we talk about advanced classes and all the rest of it, it's not all about playing. It's it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's Yes, playing the ukulele, but it's having a, a stage personality, a presence on stage, singing, uh, presentation. Uh, you know, you can be the best player in the world, but if you look like a piece of driftwood, just not talking and not speaking, no personality, it can be a bit boring to watch. Uh, so it's all those things to consider. I'd rather watch an entertaining performer, really. Uh, anything else? Because I know we are nearing the hour. Is there anything else anybody wants to see quick before Andy pops and tells us all to go home? License. Go and give us a license. Um, 
I mean, you can make that very complicated. Uh, show you quick. Whoops. I'll show you the last line because that's where I think you'll use most. Um, don't need a license for that. Very similar to uh, saving up for Sally and uh... so all I'm doing is going to that fifth fret. Going to that E chord. Again, something so subtle, it's far more simpler on paper. Again, it's, when you see it done live in front of you, it looks a bit daunting. And you may think, oh, I can never do that. But let's see it on paper. Watch the video back and practice it. As Andrew said yesterday, the three most important things when learning the Form B style is practice, practice, practice. So that's something to uh, really consider. questions or anything all happy all learned something very good <laughs>